Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The General Hospital spoilers for Thursday, September 12th show that Tracy Cordemain voiced concerns in an emergency meeting regarding Deception's connection to investor Sonny Corinthos after he had slain John Jagger Cates. Tracy had clearly made up her decision to convict Sonny already. Those in attendance who provided input on the matter were Brooke Lynn Cordemain, Lucy Coe, Natalia Ramirez, Lois Cerullo, and Maxie Jones. Everyone agreed that Tracy was exaggerating because Sonny hadn't been detained on the basis of any evidence. Everyone's attention was drawn to Lois because she didn't have an accent, and the dialect coach and her newly enhanced voice were discussed. Lois couldn't shake the baby talk she had with Harrison Chase and Violet Finn when Brooklyn spoke to her by herself. Brooklyn acknowledged that she could want to begin trying for a kid immediately away, even though she was concerned that having a baby would be too lot for them. Brooklyn inquired as to Lois's thoughts on turning into a nana as soon as possible. Cody Bell was taken aback by Sasha Gilmore Corbin's surprise family breakfast by the boathouse, which featured Max Scorpio, Felicia Scorpio, Georgie Spinelli, and James West. James mentioned Cody's recent nap with Sasha and presumed that since they were pals, they had sleepovers while they all ate around the table. Cody acknowledged that they didn't host sleepovers and said that, at the very least, he wanted Sasha to be his girlfriend. Sasha kissed Cody and decided to become his girlfriend in the space of a single minute. Maxie joined part on the family feast as well, but Sasha's work as the Quartermain's cook was put on hold when Tracy showed up and lost her cool. Sasha justified herself, saying that on her day off, she invited visitors and paid the food bill. Even though Sasha had Olivia Quartermain's approval, Tracy pretended that Sasha had gone too far. Tracy was hangry, but Mac aggressively shut her down before James offered food. Cody thanked Mac for stepping in as they enjoyed a precious father-son moment before Tracy walked back inside. Alexis Davis was mentioned as a person of interest in the investigation after Jocelyn Jacks complained to Michael Corinthos about Carly Spencer turning into Sonny's alibi. Michael believed that Joss was not wise to be spreading conspiracy ideas about Sonny and Carly at this time. Michael stated to Jocelyn why he had to let go of his hatred and embrace family once more since he found it difficult to comprehend how he had reconnected with Sonny. Jason Morgan at GH received updates on what Carly had learned from Jack Brennan and cautioned her against interacting with him. Carly had to ask for a reluctant help, but she was desperate to find Lucky Spencer and save Lulu Spencer. Although Carly detested the thought of sending Jason to a risky place far from his family, she had no choice but to send him on a lucky rescue mission in Africa. Just before Brennan called Carly with additional good news about Lucky, Jason joined the team. Diane Miller informed Sonny of Alexis's legal predicament in Sonny's office, citing Elizabeth Baldwin and Rick Lansing's reports to the police that they witnessed her getting rid of a pistol. To exacerbate the situation, Diane was already representing Sonny, thus she was unable to represent Alexis. Since everything was a complete mess, Diane cautioned that if they didn't work things out, Alexis might be arrested for a crime she didn't commit. Sonny later discussed the Kate's probe and the most recent deception drama with Natalia. After discussing his alibi, Sonny predicted that Alexis wouldn't be found guilty of murder under his supervision. Keep an eye out for all the twists and turns as Sonny tries his hardest, according to General Hospital spoilers, to keep Alexis and Christina Corinthos Davis out of danger. F. Today on General Hospital, Jordan surprises Isaiah, Brennan gives Carly awful news, Molly goes on a mission, and Rick has a change of heart. In his office, Brennan prepares a drink for himself and Carly while they wait for word on Lucky. He brings up Kate's murder, compelling Carly to reveal she is Sonny's alibi. However, she is adamant that they will not reconcile. When Carly's previously handled legal issues arise, she realizes that someone must really like her to make them go away. Brennan smirks. Brennan's eyelids wrinkle as he drinks a glass of brown whiskey. When Molly runs to the interrogation room to see her mother, Alexis blames Rick for making her appear suspicious. Molly responds that Christina, not her father, is to blame for her current situation. Molly pushes Alexis to quit sacrificing herself for Christina and inform the police where she acquired the pistol. Alexis believes there are far more likely suspects in Kate's murder, but Molly responds that they are better at disguising their traces. Molly becomes increasingly frustrated and storms out. 
Willow arrives for her first day back at the hospital. Elizabeth sends her to Lulu's floor, and they discuss Lucky's possible return home for his sister. Elizabeth becomes defensive about her axe and stalks away. After Trina welcomes Ava back to the gallery, she complains about trusting Kate's, who compelled her to lie about Christina assaulting her. She doesn't have a lawyer yet, but Nina is working on it. When Trina mentions that she and Joss aren't exactly agreeing these days, Ava hopes Trina doesn't feel like she's paying a price for their friendship. Trina assures her that their friendship has cost her nothing. She feels horrible for the Davis family's suffering, but she knows they only want someone to blame, and Ava is innocent. At Metro Court, Nina tries to persuade Rick to represent Ava. It would be an excellent way to get back at Sunny. As appealing as it seems, Rick will not risk losing Molly by representing Ava. Nina coyly replies she understands and departs. Rick stares aside, pensively. Anna pays Isaiah a visit in his hospital room, knowing that he isn't giving the whole story regarding Sidwell. He believes Sidwell kidnapped him because of his exceptional medical skills. Anna is skeptical, but he keeps to his story. When she mentions that he wouldn't be alive without Jordan, he expresses his gratitude to the man who saved him. Jordan steps in. After Anna leaves and Isaiah gets his jaw up off the floor, he laughs about presuming Jordan was a man. He would never have done it if he hadn't seen her now. However, he wonders why she rescued him. She imagined he had family who were looking for him. He avoids answering her questions about that topic. He has nothing to conceal, yet there are some things he would prefer not discuss. As Carly and Brennan resume their flirtatious conversation, Anna enters the office looking for information about Sidwell. Brennan receives a call regarding Sidwell's facility, which appears to be abandoned. They simply missed him and Lucky. When Brennan dismisses Anna's request for additional assistance in finding Lucky, she resolves to pursue him alone. After storming out, Carly pleads Brennan. She cannot lose Lulu. Haven't you already lost her? He asks. As Willow checks on Lulu, the nurse asks her comatose patient about her life, especially her feelings for Drew. She vows she'll get over them. Willow, a voice softly asks. Willow whips around to face Elizabeth, who is standing in the doorway. Spoilers for General Hospital indicate that after months of courtship, Jason Morgan and Anna Devane's alliance came to an abrupt end when he went back to work for Sonny Corinthos. Anna believes Jason ought to have a better life, but he is unable to simply walk away from Sonny. This is particularly true since Sonny requires assistance in covering his tracks following the assassination of Agent John Jagger Cates. Things will get even more complicated because of Alexis Davis and Christina Corinthos Davis, so Sonny will need to rely on Jason's help and direction. But Anna has a gut feeling that Sonny is guilty, and she thinks Jason is aware of this as well. Although tension has flared up, Jason wants to find a way to bring Anna serenity while continuing to assist her in other ways. We couldn't help but notice the spark between Anna and Jason during the September 10th show, which featured some dramatic scenes. Jason clearly cares about Anna because he made several attempts to reconnect with her and get their friendship back on track. The door isn't closed on their friendship, even if Anna isn't sure if she still sees Jason as a friend. Jason and Anna might even end up being more than just friends if their peculiar intensity continues. Given their recent interactions, there's a potential Jason and Anna will go into more sensual area. Maybe at some point GH will match up Jason and Anna? Will the program take advantage of the chemistry that has been evident and turn Jason and Anna into an unexpected couple? Given how much attention has been focused on the broken relationship between Anna and Jason, it's definitely something to consider. Jason and Anna might end up fixing it in the bedroom while giving in to some intense cravings. In the upcoming months, Anna and Jason might be an intriguing relationship to watch if everything goes according to plan. If the show is willing to go there, Jason and Anna might at least have a one-night stand. We'll give you more guesses about what's ahead for the couple. In any event, according to General Hospital teasers, Anna and Jason may update their relationship over time. We'll keep you informed of any unexpected developments. Jason consents to go. Carly sobs, she knows he's already spent a lot of time away from his family, please tell her he will return. He promises to do so. 
Then, Carly receives a call from Jack with the update she has been waiting for. Diane tells Sonny they have an issue as she pays him a visit at his restaurant. Diane discloses that Alexis has set herself up for a homicide that she did not commit. Alexis says she hasn't been charged yet when Sonny inquires about it. Despite having no alibi, Alexis threatened Kate's in front of the cops, obtained a gun, and was observed tossing it off a bridge and into the canyon. Elizabeth and his brother Rick caught Alexis in the act. Moreover, since she is already representing Alexis, she is unable to represent her. What will he do in light of the possibility that Alexis may be found guilty of first-degree murder, according to her? Diane is certain that Sonny would not stand by and watch while the mother of his kid is found guilty of a crime that they both know she did not commit. Sonny believes that Alexis ought to have asked for his assistance. Diane claims that they are both aware that Alexis would stop at nothing to protect her kids and that she doesn't always consider her options before acting. Sonny is unsure of his responsibilities. Diane says they need to figure out how to clear Alexis's name. Diane worries that Alexis might be found guilty of Kate's murder if no one else is. She walks out, figuring Alexis will contact him shortly. Sonny calls his brother Rick and gives him the finger. It looks like Natalia sees him. She adds that she recently returned from a deception meeting and that Tracy is concerned about his potential role in Kate's death and the potential fallout for the business. Sonny contends that Kate's has numerous adversaries and that he has an alibi. Natalia clarifies that Tracy is threatening to make him withdraw his money by citing the morals clause in his contract. They must devise a plan in order to proceed. He has been accused of manslaughter, but he has no idea how or when his daughter lost her kid. Apologies for bringing this up now, Natalia inquires as to Christina's whereabouts. He is aware that all she is doing is performing her duties competently. He claims that Kate's made every effort to pursue him and that he did so by using Christina. Although he is relieved that Kate's is no longer alive, he fears Alexis could now be held accountable for his death. He promises that under his supervision, that won't occur. James begs his mother if he can spend the night at Cody's as Sasha does, while Maxie joins her family outside the boathouse. Maxie didn't anticipate that. James is informed by Cody that he and Sasha don't host sleepovers. Is she not his friend, James wonders why he doesn't understand? She's actually my girlfriend, or I'd like her to be, declares Cody. Maxie informs James that it is not his decision and that he believes Sasha should say yes. Cody apologizes for putting Sasha on the spot as they enter the boathouse to talk. They share a kiss after she expresses her desire to date him. They hear Tracy grumbling aloud, so this is where my breakfast is, all of a sudden. When they step outdoors, Tracy is furious because Sasha left her with a box of instant oatmeal and planned a lavish brunch for the Scorpio clan. Sasha is her chef, Tracy cries. Sasha says that this is her day off, that she paid for the meal herself, that she has Olivia's okay, and that these people are her guests. Tracy snaps, saying that Cody and her had gone too far. Max says, that's enough, to Tracy. He tells her that nobody likes a bully and that she should learn a few things about kindness from Sasha. James extends his quiche to Tracy, explaining that he recognizes that hunger is a common reaction to insufficient food. Maxie finds it hard to believe her son dubbed Tracy hangry, while Tracy sulks. After putting Cody aside, Mac leads him inside the boathouse. He is thanked by Cody for filling in. In addition to being thrilled that Sasha is his girlfriend, Mac adds he was happy to assist. Cody expresses gratitude to Mac for embracing him into his family. Mac gives his kid an embrace after thanking him for being patient with him. Michael is forced into his office by Joss, who demands that he save their mother from herself. Joss warns their mother could face legal repercussions if she provides Sonny with an alibi for the murder of Kate's. To be honest, Michael claims that whoever killed Kate's did them a favor because he had a hatred against Sonny and had chosen to harm their family. Because of such resentment, he detained Christina and accused her of killing her own child, he refuses to cry over his passing. Joss queries Christina's well-being, not knowing anything about her. Michael claims that she is broken, and as a result, Alexis is now being investigated for Kate's slaying. According to Michael, this is why it would be worst for her to run around making up conspiracies about their mother and Sonny. 
consider what the PCPD could do to their mother if Alexis is fair game. Jaws queries how Michael restored his friendship with Sonny, still not understanding how their mother could stand up for him. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.